Welcome back. I'm awful glad to see you today. Today, let's do something that's bright and shiny that'll put you in a good mood and, and do nice things in your heart here. So I'm gonna have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that we'll use to do the painting today. And they'll come across your screen in the same order that I have them on my palette, starting with a white and coming around. And while they're doing that, let's get started. I've already covered the canvas with a thin, even coat of Magic White, and we're ready to go. Today, I'm gonna to start with a, a little tiny bit of Indian Yellow. And we'll just put a little bit on our two and a half inch brush. Okay, now let's go right up here in the sky. And we'll start making little X's, little tiny X's. You don't need much color. And it blends with the Magic White and gets lighter in value as you blend outward. And let's take some of it right down. It's a beautiful, beautiful color and it's very transparent. Indian yellow is a transparent yellow. Okay. Now then, without washing the brush, I'm going to take and go right into a small amount of alizarin crimson without washing the brush. And we'll go right above that. And let's put in a little bit of crimson. Nice little pinkish color. A little more paint. And blend it very well. Want it to blend together so you can't tell where one color stops and the next one starts. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of crimson and a little bit of Prussian blue. Very small amount of Prussian blue. It's a hundred times stronger than your crimson. And just brush mix it. Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, but very, very small amount of blue. Okay. Now, right here, we'll put a little lavender color. And this just all blends together. And then I'll go right into Prussian blue. And we'll fill up the remainder of the sky with Prussian blue. Now I haven't washed the brush all the way through this. All the way through. But you don't want to get the blue and the yellow mixed together. If you do, you'll have a bright green sky and chances are you, you won't be happy with that. There we go. Now, while I've got the old dirty brush, I'm going to go back into a little crimson and blue and maybe come right down here and lay in a little lavender color. I'll have a little bit of water here. I am an absolute fanatic for water. I love it. If it was up to me, every painting that I did nearly would have water in it. But sometimes you have to do something that doesn't have water. There we go. Don't want to lose all of our yellow, so we'll just do that for right now. And I'll clean the brush. And we clean our brushes with odorless paint thinner. There's a screen in the bottom of this bucket that I scrub the brush against. And we shake out the excess paint thinner. And then the fun. Bloop, bloop. You just beat the devil out of that brush. Take out all your hostilities. Now with a clean, dry brush, I'm gonna blend the sky together. And you can spend some time blending this. You want it to really, really blend together beautifully. You don't wanna be able to tell where one color stops and the next one starts. Just just blend it together. And you can do this several times if necessary. Step back, take a look, see. It really pays to step away from the painting sometime and look at it. Get a whole different view. Okay, now then, I'll just bring this all the way across. Now that we have a clean brush, I'll just bring it right across. Isn't that easy? We have sky and water already finished. Okay. Now then, let's build us let's build us a little mountain up here. I like mountains. My home's in Alaska, and, and we have a lot of mountains in Alaska. Some of the most beautiful mountains in the world. So I'm gonna take Prussian blue and alizarin crimson. Now you need much more crimson than blue. Once again, the blue's a is a hundred times stronger. And I want to dull that, so I'm gonna 
reach up here and put a small amount of Van Dyke brown into it. So crimson, Prussian blue, and Van Dyke brown. But I want it to have sort of a purplish cast, so I'm using more crimson than I normally would. Now, if you want to test that, see what color it really is, take a little white, and then take a little of your color and put into it. That's really the only way you can tell. Otherwise, it just looks black in here, OK? That gives us a pretty good color. Let's take a little bit on the fan brush. We'll use the fan brush today, make us a mountain. Load that brush full of paint. Pull it through there, wiggle it, both sides, and then sharpen it. Look at the amount of paint in the bristles. That's what we're looking for. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe the little mountain lives right here. You have to make this decision. Maybe, maybe, right about there. And we're using just the corner of the brush, wherever you want it to go. Give it some little wiggles and jiggles and oh, just make all kind of beautiful little things. Maybe there's a bump, wherever you want it. Use just the corner of the brush, that's all you need. And you're not applying a great deal of paint, just a little. Maybe it comes down and there's a bump there, wherever. Wherever. There we go. Now, we'll take our large brush and pull that. That removes excess paint and blends it out. And if you can see the entire mountain, it should be more distinct at the top than it is at the bottom. So this happens automatically because it's mixing with the color underneath and the magic white automatically. It gets lighter in value as it goes toward the horizon. See there? You don't have to worry about it. The brush and the canvas, they do it for you. And you've got a basic mountain shape already. Now then, let's take another fan brush. I have several here, so I don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning them. OK, we'll load it full of titanium white. And to that, I'm going to reach right down here and grab a little bit of permanent red, small amount. Small amount. Don't want to set it on fire. Load a lot of paint into the bristles. A lot of paint. OK, let's go right up here. Now, you have to make some decisions in this mountain. Which one of these peaks is the farthest away? You want to do the one that's farthest away first and work forward. So maybe, let's start over here. And I'm just going to touch and wiggle it. Just wiggle it. Just let all these little things happen. Very gently. Very gently. Here comes one. There it is. There it is, and it moves around. It goes right down there like that, wherever you want it to go. There. OK. Oh, here we are. There it is. There. I see it. Just visualize these things in your mind and put them on the canvas. That's all there is. Just let it go. Now, normally, normally we put highlights on the mountain with a knife. Today I wanted to show you that you can use your little fan brush and just make all kinds of beautiful effects. Just let them go. There. Wherever you want this to go, make it as wide or as small as you want it. Maybe there's a little light showing right there. Maybe even a little back here, wherever. Okay, now I'm going to take a little Prussian blue and mix right into my white to make a shadow color. We need a shadow color. There we go. Now, let's go back up here. Once again, figure out which one of these is farthest away and do it first. Do the one in the back first. See, now we've done that one. Now let's take a little paint, come right down through here, and we come directly through that. It pushes that one right into the background. That, that easy. Did you know you had that much power? You can move mountains. You can do anything. There we go. Now, each little highlight here needs its own private shadow. So you just sort of look at what you laid in here and begin working with it. area. Don't want to kill all your darks. Maybe 
is a little shadow right there. And a little shadow lives right behind that highlight. Barely, barely touching the canvas. Super, super easy little way to make very effective distant mountains. Okay, maybe there's a little right in there. Wherever you want it. Wherever you want it. Drop it in. And maybe, 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 maybe we want to pull this out. Hang on down. You can take these mountains anywhere you want to go. If you're not careful, you'll, you'll get to where you like this and you'll cover up your entire canvas with just mountains, which is wonderful. It teaches you how to make mountains. That's the way I used to practice. I would cover an entire canvas with mountains and scrape it off and do it again, over and over and over. And that's the way you learn, is by repetition, doing things over and over. Okay, now let's take a clean, dry brush and I want to create a little mist here, so we'll tap this. Just gently, gently, gently tap. Follow the angles in your mountain. And then lift upward. Very light. Three hairs and some air. Barely, barely touching. Very soft. Following those angles. Most, most important. Over here, we tap in this direction and lift up. Very softly. easy to destroy, but we just want to diffuse. Okay. Now then, we can start playing a little bit here. We'll take, this is our lavender color that we made, purplish color. Same thing the mountain's made out of. I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue into it. Get a little more blue hue. Blue hue. That's hard to say. Okay, let's go back up here. And maybe there's some few little Tree lines running down the side of this mountain. Touch, using just a corner of the brush, lift upward. These are far, far away. We don't want detail yet. Far, far away. But you have to follow the angles that are in the mountain. If you don't, it's not going to look right, and you're going to be unhappy with me. And I want you to be happy. That's what painting's all about does nice things to your heart. There we go. Just make it look like the tree line running up the side back here. Far, far away. It's another way of creating distance in your painting. And I'm going to take a clean, dry, one-inch brush and very lightly, very lightly, whisper light, begin lifting up and allowing that to mix with the undercolor so it softens it. We want it to be very soft and very distant, quiet. See? Isn't that a super way to make little distant tree lines? And you don't have to do hardly a thing. Just lay a little color on, lift it up, and you're in business. Painting is not only fun, it can be easy. All you need to do is learn a few little basic rules and go crazy. Okay, now we can get in here. Let's get some, some more good dark color. Let's just keep using the fan brush. We've used it so much today. Maybe, maybe, there it is. Make a decision, drop it in. Have to think a minute, drop it in. Just sort of look at your painting and, and visualize all these beautiful little things. Let them happen, let them happen. You know, probably one of the hardest things is not, is not how to paint, but what to paint. That's what drives most of us crazy. Is sitting around trying to figure out what to paint. I carry a I carry a camera with me everywhere I go nearly. And with that camera, if I see something that excites me, I take a picture of it and save it. Because you can capture a second in time. 
and save it till you want to use it. And from that, you can make beautiful paintings. And we'll give you the technique here. You take what you see, because everybody sees nature differently. And you paint beautiful paintings. And they'll make you happy. Okay, I'm just pulling a little bit, a little bit of this lavender color down. Now, if you want to make this look like it goes back here, let this reflection be shorter than over here. And it'll give the impression that it, it's round like that and goes way back. Hmm, sneaky, huh? Okay, now very lightly come across. Super light. Super, super light. Just enough to give it a little watery appearance and then leave it alone. It's very, very easy to overwork it. Overwork it. We don't want to do that. Okay, now then let's put let's put some highlights back in here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of permanent red. Permanent red. Here, and we'll mix it with a, a little bit of yellow. This is cad yellow. Nice bright color. We'll little Indian yellow throw it in there. We'll make us a beautiful, beautiful, bright, bright color here. This is almost an orangey color. If you wanted to dull it, you could put a little bit of brown into it. That'll dull it right down. Okay, let's go right up here. And I'm gonna use just the fan brush still. And I just wanna tip. Just tip it here and there. Put in some nice little highlights. Not too many. There we go. Okay, a little more paint on my brush. And we'll go over here. Don't overdo these. I don't want to kill all your darks. Just want some, just want some impressions. Just like so. And begin making all kinds of little different things here. This is where you can change the, the number of projections that you have out into the water. And all you have to do is grab them, pull some down, make you a little reflection. Go across. Alrighty. Alrighty. I'm gonna take a little bit of the magic white and put a I'm gonna put a little of that lavender color into the magic white. Very flat. Very flat. Pull it as flat as you can get it. And then cut across it. Okay? That'll give you a small roll of paint, a little line of paint right on the blade. And we're gonna push right into the canvas, just like we're trying to cut a hole through it and lay in some nice little water lines back there. Keep these lines basically straight. You can go anywhere you want to go, but they need to be straight. Keep your water in the painting. There. A little bit over here. And already you can see how it's starting to build depth into the painting. It makes it look far, far away. So many of the fast painting techniques are very flat. We, we spend a lot of time and energy trying to make these paintings have tremendous depth. Okay. Going back to my purple. That's crimson and, and Prussian blue. Let's put a happy little tree right there. Touch, use a corner of the brush. And give him some little arms. That easy. That easy. Give him a friend. Just drop them in. Just corner of the brush. Use the same corner of the brush all the way through. Maybe, maybe there's some bigger trees live right there. Touch. Now look how that color stands out against that yellow back there. It's exciting, the contrast. It really stands out. Okay, maybe, maybe we'll give him a little friend here. Another one. We'll just make a little, little forest. Now they call it a stand, not a forest. It's called a stand of pine. Get the correct terminology here. There we go. And maybe, maybe I like to have a little tree that's leaning over. Maybe a big old deer stepped on him when he was little and put a little herd on him. There. Okay, now we we'll just take. 
drop in some more foliage right there. See how you can just keep building and building and building and creating more and more depth in your painting? Now, while I've got that on my brush, we can put in some general reflections. And then we take our large brush and grab those reflections and pull downward very gently, very, very gently, and come across. That easy. Okay, let's put some trees on the other side. Boy, these trees are so much fun. Maybe there's one right there. Touch, corner of the brush. Now, the one-inch brush will work very well for this, or the two-and-a-half-inch brush. A lot of times I use the one inch of the two and a half inch brush. Today this painting has got so much fan brush work in it, I just decided we'd do them with a fan brush. You can do entire paintings just with a fan brush. And they are beautiful. Okay, maybe right there, wherever you want them. Every so often, take and pile your paint back up. You need a pile of paint to work from, so you can load the brush deep. There we go. And if you find your paint's not sticking well, add a little paint thinner. That'll thin it down, makes it stick better. And we'll just very quickly drop in a happy little thing right here. Maybe there's another, there it is. Wherever you want it. Wherever you want it. That's where it is. Like so. Let's use the old big brush. Let's get right in here some Prussian blue and some crimson. Okay, let's let's go. We'll just drop in some color right here. And I want a reflection under here, so I'll just pull a reflection. That's all there is to it. Come across. And we'll bring this. Okay, time to put some highlights on some of this. So on these evergreens up here, I'm just going to put the least little touch here and there. Same, this is that same orangey color. Don't want too much. I want this to be almost a silhouette. And here, a few little highlights, a few little grassy things growing up and down there. Like it. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of Prussian blue white and a little tiny bit of crimson in it. Mostly blue and white with a little crimson. Let's go right up here and we'll put a little bit of land in here. There we go. And while we got that on the knife, let's drop a little bit right in there. Just like so. Wherever you want it. Like so. Maybe there's a there's some. <laughs> just, just make decisions and drop it in. Got to make the decisions. Okay, we'll take some yellow and some permanent red. And let's do these trees over here. Tiniest little bit. Don't want a great deal of highlight. Try to keep them silhouetted. There. And let's just drop some, a few little highlights here and there. Let them come down into this land area. Just let them come right on down. And the one inch brush would work very well for putting all these little highlights on. Since I got the fan brush going, we'll just use it. And it's a super, super little painting. Should give you a lot of ideas and set your imagination on fire. And you can do this in any color combination. Okay, let me get my knife here. And let's take a little bit of the, this is the magic white with the purple in it. And we'll drop in some little water lines. Just like so. 
so. Just barely, barely touching. So over here. Magic light with a little bit of the purple color. And hold on, I've got that on the knife. Maybe we'll make a few indications of just a little tree trunks here and there where you can just looks like little trunks. Don't want a great deal of detail. Just little indications here and there. We don't know how many trees are in there. And we don't really care. Okay, yeah. I think we just about have a completed painting there. And it's something that I think you'll enjoy. Try it at home. Take a little thin oil and I'll sign this one. Signature is not going to show up very well against all this red, but it's here. But I hope you've enjoyed this painting. Certainly a pleasure being here with you today. And from all of us here, we'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting, God bless, and I'll see you next week.